Ethergazer version 2.0 onward introduced player to multiple modifiers from the Tianyan faction. It's called Tianyan, but I guess when it, you put it in the English slang, it could be sounded as Tian Yuan or Tian Yuan, but it's pronounced as Tian Yan. Tian Yan was already mentioned in the game, so it's not like it's a new discovery, but just waiting to be introduced into the main scenario. Hey, what's up? Zaki here and welcome back to another Eater Gazer video. We're soon approaching the upcoming contents of 2.0 and in this video we'll talk about what are the new upcoming features, a tip of the iceberg of the upcoming modifiers and also some other features if I could remember them correctly. Of course I am still working on the story recap videos but there is another YouTuber who has already covered this called Player Recap. I really love the way he covered that video and I urge you to check those video out but I'll be making my own version as well but not a competition but really just expressing my love for each gazer. Do note that all these are according to the CN schedule and global might differ so I'm just sharing with you my experience. Global only has flame tier banner left to go through and after that is either going to be Hades rerun or not considering that during that time of the period in the CN version there's nothing to do because mainly I think they were working on the global version of Eater Gazer. I, I, I don't really know. And I think that the reason why global might be different because they already has the roadmap laid out for them. A notable development in the 2.0 version onward content is the discontinuation of new A rank modifier. With all forthcoming modifier being just S rank, whether that's a good or a bad news for the players, I'll leave it to you. But for for me, considering that the game is making such a role revenue and also why the fact that they are so generous, I gotta say it's probably for the best. So I want you to pay attention because limited Sejiu will be a thing from 2.0 onward, allowing players to only farm them once during each specific event but however this was brought to the CN dev as some modifier does not shine without them so they're still available for farming but in a system of every time there is an event, you'll be able to farm each specific sigils depending on which day, but for weekends, you'll be able to select from a group of uh, sigils, the limited version, but only on weekend. Synchro buff, a global term referred to the system designed to enhance the capabilities of older modifier, ensuring that they can elevate their powers and remain competitive with the more advanced asteroid modifier will be introduced if not mistaken, version 2.1 or 2.2. These single buffs have a series of ascension level with the first two being free in order to ascend past the third le level or the fourth level. Player must have at least the modifier at double S ranks. If you're stressing on praying for rerun or spoke just so that you can get your favorite character and your single buff, fear no further as on version 2.1 or anniversary during the CN period, comes a select banner. This select banner shares the P system. You can pick any modifier you wish to pull. However, you're only allowed to change the banner three times as I remember. Yes, it's going to be a 50-50 banner. So plan accordingly on who you really want to pull. And the 50-50 will be carried forward into the next banner like uh, Yang Cheng banner or whatever, banner, whatever comes next. However, characters such as Living Soul, Osiris, Thor, and Scuddy wasn't seen in the CN Select banner. So if you're currently playing now and plan to main Thor and Ulcer for a long term, now might be the best chance to grab them. I can only pray that they include them in the global version because that's really just easy money and I don't think there's a reason not to. Uh, number one, it could bring new players in and they can, you know, just pick whoever they want. Parry system will be implemented to boss fight in the future, differentiating from the red flash which indicate players should dodge, the yellow flash signal players to time the attack correctly. But if you're like me, playing from the emulator could be a little bit hard, but I tried to parry on my phone and it's actually a lot more easier. So hoping Gazer does stress on releasing the PC anytime soon because Emulators are driving me crazy despite I'm having an affiliate with them. Before we go on talking about the Tianyan modifier, I thought I'd throw in this as well. 90 over 90, 100% PD system was implemented on version 2.6, but I hope for global case, it comes a lot faster or a lot earlier. This system is kind of like how the Punishing Grey Raven system, where the 70 over 70, 50 50 will still remain, but it's really up to you on whether you want to do the 90 over 90 guarantee or 70 70. There's also another system known as uh, it was implemented in version 2.6 where um, this system of the bond system and ultimate system and each character you bring into the field will unlock some sort of a 
ultimate change buff but we'll talk a little bit more when it comes to global but just to keep you in mind that there's something like this coming in the future now we talk about the Tianyin modifier. So Tianyin modifier is also introduced a new faction buff. A pair of Tianyin, which is two modifier, will change the modified mode to a pretty traditional Chinese Shui Mo feel. This will keep the combo meter always at Omega rank, allowing you to retain your damage and probably the best moment to throw in every attack you have. Now, if you bring three Tianyin modifier, they will provide a combat bonus of combo gain rate up by 20% modified mode, which means that uh, the combo meter is gonna gain 20% faster, and modified mode is extended by 5 seconds. And depending on the ranking of the combo system, will increase the attack power of all modifiers. B will grant you another 10%, A will 15%, S 20%, and Omega at 25%. And will always be 25% in the modified mode, which is very insane. And I gotta say, I really love the Tianyin and Niles modified mode. With the arrival of Tianyin modifier, players are also given a Tianyin Fang Tor selector for free. Only one which I highly recommend redeeming for Lingguang. Starting at version 2.0, we have two modifiers on radar, which is Lingguang and Jingbu. I highly recommend saving your shifted star for Lingguang, not only because she is the best support, top tier, but players will be given not only one, but three copies of Jing Wu during the event if we are following the CN schedule, allowing players to double S her and almost close to triple S. Jing Wu is the strongest fire DPS onward from here. You'll be able to pull her also with your yellow ticket. She's known for her floating fighting style where she unleashes her slash. The great thing about her is that her normal slash attack is a slash through attack allowing you to hit straight line of target combining with Gang Chang ability to limit limitlessly pulling enemy into one center and Ling Guang ability to further boost fire modifier. Jing Wu is gonna do such a good job in time attack challenges. Jing Wu also has a beautiful swimsuit that I actually regret not getting because it has effect changes and changes her blade color to blue, which is not ye uh, yellow, but the effects are blue, which is my favorite. Jing Wu is soon surpassed by Izanami, which honestly I didn't I don't think you should still skip Jing Wu because it didn't really matter. Jing Wu excelled in her own fire type feel as well as Tian Yuan. So it's best to not you're gonna get her anyway if you're playing, right? But it's whether or not you want to triple S her, so I'll leave that to you. So alongside her banner, next is Lingua. Mechanism is Trace, and I do have to say she has an interesting playstyle. Like I said, I'll drop only the tip of the iceberg for this roadmap videos. Her enhanced skill 1 provides a dazzling armor similar to that of a rank Dante, except better it has almost about 30% more of HP, protecting your entire party member. Not only she has shield, but she also buffs entire team damage overall. She also provides a debuff to the enemy depending on the enemy HP and some percentage of math. I say it's pretty decent, like her Fountor provides critical rate by 25% and damage by 25% for the entire team under any of her enhanced skill buff. While Lingguang can act as a universal buffer, she's definitely favored for the fire team more depending on which Aether Codes player choose. Is she better than Hera? Slightly, but in my opinion, it's better to have both of them. But if I have to, I will put Lingguang on the fire team while Hera as a universal buffer. Lingguang has a Jiangsi skin or aka Chinese zombie skin that comes with a main lobby display. If you're interested, it comes along with the skin and it's not free. In later version 2.0, we're introduced to Ming Heng. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't play him as much. But he's a dual element of Wind and Thunder. His gameplay is kind of fancy, ranking T1 in CM, but not recommending his Fang Tor unless you really love him. Uh, his damage output are, I would say, a 7 out of 10. So he's okay. I will not talk much about him. But again, DPS, if you want to play your favorite DPS, then get their Fang Tor. It's okay. Version 2.1 arrived with the most anticipated character, the star of the Tianyin art, Yang Cheng. Where do I start with my favorite Tianyin modifier? Ah, she has two skins. One is a see-through Sensei bra skin, which is not free, and the other is a swimsuit lingerie, which is gacha. This one can be used in the dorm system, which is pretty hot, showing much of her thick skin. The swimsuit lingerie, if I remember correctly, if you're lucky, you'll get it easily, but if you're not, it costs probably about 70 pools for a modifier. 
Okay, we're off track here. Like I said previously, Gang Chang pulls enemy in and knocked her with her super cool dragon backflip skill. She's water type and rage mechanism, but she has little to no problem generating her rage compared to other rage characters even in the future. A fun trial further boosts all Tianyi modifier final damage by 20% and other factors as well. So slapping her, Ling Guang, and the strongest Tianyin DPS creates the popular Tianyin trio. After Gang Chang comes Lu Liang, a wind type trace modifier. You'll be able to pull her with your yellow ticket similarly to Jing Bu, but much prefer to triple assing to Jing Bu. She's very fun to play, I gotta say so myself. You get to try her out in stories and event. As her attack does feel joyful to look at, the splash effect you feel from her skill does has an immersion feel to it, and ability to ride her floatboard is also very cool. Um, nothing much to say about her. Uh, again, a decent DPS, but I would rank her around six over ten, ranking T1. But I'll put her at T2 for myself. Again, another character you should get only if you like her and if you enjoy playing her. You want her to excel more, then get her Fang Tor. Version 2.2 introduced a quite of a personality, Ying Zhao, another wind element. Because gosh, the Chinese does love their feng shui. You know, like feng means feng, wind, you know? I love playing Ying Zhao. She has this Captain America Wakana shield, but it's actually a tonfa. Every time you dodge with Ying Zhao, she'll have a flash up skill with no cooldown. So you can kind of guess she's a dodge and attack character. You just gotta focus on dodging. If there's no dodging, she's not really useful so i mean which enemy doesn't attack you back right she's ranked higher than Ming Heng and lu liang but whoever you pull between these three they have fun mechanisms so it's okay okay jing wu has swimsuit but with no effects slightly cheaper than jing wu i don't recommend getting it. it's boring so sad okay we got no one in 2.3 so the next is 2.4 where we went back to sasami arc for another mission a new Ice Shino character is introduced known as Kuro Mitsuha. She's a pretty goofy and funny most of the time, was feared by most people of Sasarami due to false rumor. Mitsuha is a fun, fun, fun character, and as her playstyle focuses on moving in and out and piking and stuff, I love her playstyle. Even till this day, she is a rage mechanism with problem generating rage, but overall she might look like a DPS but more of a semi DPS. While Fire Team has Ling Guang and Hera is a unit for the buffer, Mitsuha role is to decrease ice resistance toward enemy. It was during this patch that Skadi received her synchro buff, further empowering her to T0 but soon surpassed by the next character. Izunami comes next after Kuro Mitsuha. Also a rage mechanism and ice type, she is currently the best DPS in the game as of this video. But again, though she might surpass Jingwu, but to me they just excel in different department and different elements. Izanami playstyle is more of a basic attack to combo based on her skills. Her attacks are flashy, but to me it's really just a tap of a button. Her skill 3 is a wait to counter skill. If you manage to time it, she'll do this little cool animation and release a slash. She's just a number with no interesting mechanic for me, and you do need her Fang Tor, because without her Fang Tor, I would rate her a 4 out of 10. I know most of you will judge me for saying this, but yeah, uh, she is a strong DPS, but her playstyle is a big no-no for me. So it really comes to you. If you want meta, go for her. If you want a better playstyle, I urge you to pull someone else. Which brings me to my next modifier. Version 2.7 introduced the newer version of Kagutsuchi. He's not evil, but I won't spoil anything else. While weaker than Izanami, Kagutsuchi just leaves the superior playstyle in my opinion. Aside from being a chibi Sephiroth, Kagutsuchi can use his health to charge up for his spiral slash bar attack. But he also has a lifesteal to make up for that, so don't worry about it. Most of his skill consists of him blinking around enemy, which is super sick. You can see it just right here. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth. And then I use the skill tree to zigzag, go to the back, do a spin, and then bam. He is T1 though, but gosh, I don't really care about whether he is meta or not, but the gameplay is just king. Kagosuchi ultimate chain chain with flame tear. But I don't really think you need it because number one, there are different factions. It's going to be a little bit slightly harder to build that team if you're going to be bringing Lu, uh, Ling Guang along with Kagosuji. And then you're not going to get those Gen Zone buff using this team. So this is not a compulsory in my opinion. It's not worth it. It's not going to help a lot. So Kagosuji is good being a solo unit. But yeah, and his fire element and also rage. I guess all the characters in these chapters are very angry. 
The Shino Crow arc came to an end with version 2.7, but on one of their live streams, they tease us with the NS rank Buzebo movie coming in the future. It would most likely probably come with a side story, who knows, so subscribe to stay tuned, I guess. After that, on the forum, we're teased with another two new upcoming modifiers where they're actually gonna announce next year. Because in China, they're currently having a, I don't know, like a anime booth or something like that. And it's these two are going to be a Tianyang modifier. No info of them yet, but here's Lu Wu and Ziming. Ziming? 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 I, I'm not sure. But the artwork, very beautiful. Lu Wu looks like Himiko. Himiko is not playable, by the way. So that's it for now. Uh, probably the next time I make a long ass Eater Gazer video will be six months later. If Global does catch up, maybe it's probably, probably a lot more sooner. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching and watching till the end of the video. I really appreciate it. My name is Zaki, and A is just a gaming channel.